20 years later, it's still, I think, an historic win. And if you ever want to convince someone why it's important to join a union, um, tell them about the Oakdale dispute. Tell them about a, a struggle of a small group of people um, in the Illawarra district that uh, uh, banded together, stuck together, got support of others, and were able to force um, an anti-union federal government to turn around. I mean, that... Lift doors opened and it was over. The end of more than 40 years of coal mining at the Oakdale Colliery. And the end too of these workers' plans for retirement with no funds left for entitlements. At 56, Tom Geyer has worked at the colliery for 39 years. He says he's missed out on $97,000. The Oakdale story is one of many stories where workers get retrenched without their entitlements, and there was quite a cluster of them around the end of the 90s. The owner of the, the private owner of the Oakdale mine uh, closed it, went into bankruptcy and didn't have uh, money to pay the entitlements. It was quite a small mine, 125 workers. Uh, and uh, they were owed, though, those 125 workers, $6.3 million. Uh, and a fire sale of assets wasn't going to get anywhere near the cost of those entitlements. And there were many other creditors lined up in front of the workers. So uh, the workers set up a picket line um, to try and stop the equipment going off site so that they got some leverage um, with the liquidators. We worked with the liquidators, as we often do, uh, to try and uh, get the maximum amount uh, for, for the workers. Uh, but it was clear there was not going to be enough. So we started a campaign uh, to get the entitlements. Anger, though, is on the rise. The nation was moved by these pictures. 125 hard-working men thrown on the scrap heap facing an uncertain future. But it's a modern day tale. Companies run down by their owners who move on and start again somewhere else. It's that perceived injustice that sparked anger and sympathy. Every worker in Australia deserves a fair go. That's all we're asking. There was a lot of public sympathy uh, for their plight, uh, a not uncommon plight, and what we wanted was an entitlement scheme for all coal miners. Some of these miners have travelled down from central Queensland four days back and forth in a bus for a two-hour rally. And mostly they're just the union delegates. They say that if the government doesn't get the message this time, they'll be back with the workers next time, and that would mean shutting down Australia's coal industry. There is not a working man or woman in this country who does not sympathise with you and identify with you. The miners are demanding a long-term insurance fund be set up to pay out the entitlements of any Australian worker who finds himself in a similar situation. A national insurance scheme for every worker in Australia has to happen and it has to happen now. Look, this was the government um, that had Peter Reith as the IR Minister who oversaw the sacking of the, of the nation's waterfront workers and their replacement by mercenaries trained in Dubai. This was the most anti-union uh, government Australia had had in its history. So we ramped up the pressure with delegates meetings, with rallies, we took rallies to Canberra um, to create some pressure uh, and during the course of the dispute they actually agreed to meet with us uh, in some weeks time and then we found out through the papers that they were all scheduled to be overseas at that time. So the workers feeling very frustrated with that um, uh, asked the union to push on um, more decisively and so we did that. Uh, we held meetings around the country to gauge the level of support uh, and ultimately um, we took strike action. We shut down the Australian coal industry for 24 hours. Thousands of miners across Australia have defied court orders to return to work after walking off the job at midnight. Oakdale's 125 miners have been out of work now for three months and the millions of dollars owed to them are still nowhere in sight. Today, thousands of Australian coal workers abandoned the pits in support, defying Supreme Court orders in two states to get back to work. This is one of Dunbeer's mines where the miners haven't been sacked. It's closed today by the national coal strike, which is costing the industry an estimated $30 million. That's several times more than the $6 million the Oakdale miners are owed. Uh, the overwhelming support that we had, um, we were actually um, applauded by most uh, media commentators, applauded by the public, and never prosecuted by the companies or the government. And in fact, the government was forced 
overnight um, to ram through legislation uh, to give us our plan B. And our plan B was that they should access the money that's been put aside by employers for an industry long service leave scheme for coal miners uh, and take $6.3 million out of that. Now they did that. That was our plan B ask and we, we, we forced an anti-union government to deliver that outcome mm -hmm. in a short turnaround. So that was a magnificent victory, but it wouldn't have been the case were it not for the fact that public sympathy mm -hmm. uh, for the issue was important uh, and that the workers were the face of the, of the campaign. It is an about face and the government is the last to fall into line about uh, this issue. It's a just cause and, it, and our proposal about the long service leave fund was always a sensible proposal. Labor jumped on board, Democrats jumped on board, the community have, support has been tremendous. The media commentary has been very favourable um, and uh, it just goes to show that you can move governments. And of course it did lead to the establishment of a federal entitlement scheme for all workers. There were a number of other um, important disputes around workers' entitlements, um, many of which run by uh, different unions, uh, and they all played a role too. But Oakdale was the one that broke the back of an anti-union government and forced its hand to change legislation in the dead of night. Nobody else actually could claim to have done that. And I think that that made it inevitable that they would have to change uh, to, towards a scheme of universal entitlement scheme, because otherwise, every time someone was sacked without entitlements, they'd say, why do these people get treated differently to the Oakdale miners? So it really did set the stage for that universal scheme. People now can't see why they should be in a union then I, there must be something wrong with them because if you're not in a union you're not going to get nothing and we've proven that. We've proven if you're in a good strong union like ours, the CFMEU, you'll win the battle. No risk in the world and we've proven that point.